Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. In my last video I took you through a fairly simple tutorial and showed you how to create, customize and animate titles in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you haven't watched the video yet I highly recommend that you check it out before you continue with this tutorial. Now I really like how easy it is to create titles in Premiere Pro but you are going to reach a point usually pretty quickly where what you want to do with your titles is just no longer possible. You may want to create some rather advanced titles with detailed custom effects, character by character animation, motion blur and all of the bells and whistles that you've seen in TV shows or movies. Therefore in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Adobe After Effects to create some really cool title animations, how to apply and customize presets and finally we are going to look at the power that you gain by using custom text animators. This is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you have at least watched my 8 part beginner tutorial series. But now before I get annoyed at all of these titles yet again, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and as always I will start out with an empty composition. Let's start out by creating and animating a really simple title. Simply go up to the toolbar and select the type tool. Note that if you hold down your mouse button there are actually two type tools available, one for horizontal and one for vertical text. For now let's just go with the horizontal type tool, click into your preview window and then type some text. When you work with the type tool in Adobe After Effects you should see two panels appear on your interface. One is the character panel where you can change the font, the color and all of the text properties and another one is the paragraph panel where you can change the text alignment. If for some reason you can't see these panels on your interface simply go to the window menu and make sure that they are enabled. Note that while my composition background appears to be black it is actually transparent this means that once you're done creating your title in After Effects you can easily export it as a video with alpha transparency and overlay it onto your video project in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now that we've created some simple text we can easily animate it. All we have to do is select the layer in the layer window, reveal the position, scale, rotation or whatever other property on the layer that we want to animate and enable keyframing by clicking on the little stopwatch icon. Same as in Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects will place some diamonds on our timeline which indicates that there are keyframes at this position. With the cursor at the beginning of the composition, let's zoom out a little bit and let's reposition this text somewhere over to the left side. I'm also going to rotate it and scale it so you can see that After Effects will create keyframes for all animated properties. Now let's go forward a bit, maybe about a second and let's drag the title back into our frame. After Effects will automatically add a keyframe for the position property. Let's level out this text and let's shrink it down and move it over to the left hand side. And now if we scrub between these keyframes you can see the text coming into the screen. Let's zoom in a little bit and play this back. And there it is. Now let's say we want the text visible on the screen for about 2 seconds before it disappears. So let's go 2 seconds forward to about 3 seconds. I'm actually going to select these 3 keyframes, copy them, Ctrl C and paste them in at 3 second Ctrl V so that in between these two sets there are no changes to the title and then I'm going to go to about 4 seconds and simply push the text off towards the right hand side. So now at the end the text will slide out towards the right. Let's rewind the composition and play it back. Nice! Yes it's a very simple animation but it was also really really easy to create and Personally I'm a much bigger fan of the interface for keyframing in Adobe After Effects than what Adobe Premiere offers you. The other cool thing you can do in Adobe After Effects very very simply is you can enable motion blur on your text elements so they just look a little bit smoother as they move around. In order to enable motion blur make sure that you enable motion blur on your composition and then every layer has this little switch here which is for motion blur so make sure you turn that on. And again I keep getting asked this all the time if you cannot see these mode switches there's a little button here that toggles between two sets so make sure you've got that set to show the switches and then you can enable motion blur and there you go you'll see a little bit of motion blur on the text here and probably a little bit as it's coming in and if we play this back now it'll just look a little bit smoother. Cool that should be enough for the very basics let's get fancy. Let's delete this layer, reselect the type tool and create another title. 
With the text element selected, I'm going to go over into my paragraph panel and center align the text. Let's reposition it in the middle of the composition. Let's change the font over to something a little bit more fancy. Yep, I think Snap ITC will do well. And let's also change the color to eh, maybe a fairly desaturated red. Cool, I think that looks fancy enough. And before we dive into the really deep end, the good news is that you can create some really amazing animations in Adobe After Effects with just a few clicks by using the animation presets that come inbuilt with Adobe After Effects. Let's go back to the beginning of our composition and let's go over into the Effects and Presets panel. Open up the Animation Presets and in there you will find a text folder. Expand the text folder and in here you will find a large number of intricate animations that you can easily apply to any text element that you have in your composition. Let's expand the mechanical section and let's try out hmm, Rack and Pinion. To apply the effect, simply drag it onto your text layer, let go and let's play back this animation. Now, if that's not a fancy animation, I don't know what is. Let me quickly show you what this preset has actually done. Let's go over into the layer window and expand the layer properties. Expand the text property and in here you will find, depending on which preset you used, one or multiple animators. An animator, this one here for example, for rotation and tracking, consists of two things. One, it contains selectors. Selectors are responsible for, well, selecting parts of your text. This can be individual letters, individual words or lines, and it can be linear or a little bit more random, depending on the type of selector you use and how you configure it. The other thing an animator contains is effects. And these are the effects that are going to be applied to all of the pieces of your text that the selector has selected. This animator applies both a tracking and a rotation effect to the text. And if we scrub through the composition, you can clearly see the letters being pushed away due to the tracking effect and they twist and turn due to the rotation. If we expand the range selector, you can see that it has properties for start, end and offset. Now, this controls the area, the amount of characters that are being selected and that have the tracking and rotation effects applied to them. Do keep in mind that when you are working with presets, if you want to apply a brand new preset, make sure that you delete any existing animators from your text layer first. Of course, you can also stack the effects and combine presets to create some really cool stuff. But for now, I'll just delete the rotation and tracking animator. Let's apply another preset. For example, let's try the Doppler preset. Let's play back the composition. That looks kind of wonky. I'm not quite sure what this is. This is kind of just twisting and bending the text. And again, you can now find an animator that has been applied to the text. If we expand the animator, you can see that it changes the anchor point of the selected elements. And if we expand the selector, this is a simple range selector, but it has been animated to oscillate back and forth over your text. Now, After Effects comes with a pretty large number of really cool text presets, and I encourage you to play around with them. They probably vary depending on which version of After Effects you have, but they're all really cool, they look really good, and obviously you can go into the animators and customize them and keyframe them in any way that you want. Now let's take this one step further and create our own custom animation. Let's delete the text element, and let's create a brand new one for the last part of this tutorial. I'm actually going to change the font. Maybe we're going Source Sans Pro and I'm going to change the color back to white and maybe we'll make it bold and make this font size just a little bit bigger. Cool, I think that should do. This new text element obviously has no animation on it just yet and we are going to stay away from the presets. Instead, we are going to add some custom animators ourselves. For that, expand the text layer properties and over on the right side of the text property, you will find a little animate button. Click on the little arrow and here are all of the properties that we can animate. Now let's choose fill color and let's change the color of this text. Now our text has gone on red and if you go into the text layer, you will actually find a new animator added to the text property. You can see that the animator is applying a fill color effect with the red color to all of the selected elements of the text. Let's change this color maybe more to a faint blue because I think it looks a little bit nicer. And in order to animate which pieces of the text are going to be selected and have the blue color applied to it, let's expand the range selector. You can see it has a start end and an offset end. The start is at the beginning of the text. 
the end is at the end of the text. And what happens is if you change these, for example, see, I'm scrolling in the beginning of the range. So my start range now starts in the middle of the first line. We can also change the end to bring in the end and only apply the effect to a small section of the text that we have on the screen. The range selector also has an offset that you can animate to make this little window of effect slide over the text. The range selector also has some advanced parameters. Um, one really cool one is controlling whether the effect is applied on a character by character basis or on every word or every line. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the details. Play around with them as you want to. There's some really cool stuff here. Instead, let's say I don't just want my characters to be blue. I also want them to go blurry. In order to add another effect to this animator, over on the right side of this animator property, you'll find a little add button. And if you click on the arrow, you will see you can either add more effects to this animator or you can add other selectors to this animator. For now, let's go to property and add a blur effect. Um, by default, this doesn't blur at all. So if we increase this, you'll see that the selected text elements are now getting blurry. So now what we could do is, for example, we could start out with the entire text blurred out. Now, obviously, you want these text effects to be animated and you could animate the start or the end of the range selector, but I'm just going to animate the offset itself. Um, let's move forward a few seconds and let's push the offset all the way to the right. Cool. Let's rewind and play this back. And you have a really cool animation of the text being revealed. Now, let's delete the blur effect for now. And let's say I'm not happy with this range selector because it's kind of boring, it's very linear, I don't really like it much. So what you can do is you can actually delete and add new selectors. So let's delete the range selector. Obviously, without a selector, the effect will be applied to the entire text. So now everything is blue. But let's go over to the right side of the animator, click on Add, and this time we're going to add a selector. Now you've already seen the range selector. There's also a weekly selector, which we are going to use. There's also an expression one. Um, this one's more advanced and you can read up all about it on the Adobe help page, which I am going to link down in the description of the video. For now, let's just create a really cool effect and add a wiggly selector. Let's rewind and play this back. And the wiggly selector, maybe I should make this color a little bit more solid. It's kind of hard to see. Now the wiggly selector will randomly select characters out of your text and apply the effect to it. Obviously, you can expand the wiggly selector and there are a lot of different options on this thing. Um, right now, more importantly, it's based on characters. If, for example, you said my wiggly selector is based on words, you will see that the effect is always applied to entire words. You could also change this to lines to say the effect is applied to entire lines. So you're really, really free to customize this in any way you want. Now there's tons of options with these selectors and obviously we can add new properties to the animator. For example, let's add a scale and scale the characters up a little bit to make a really nice drunk text effect. Let's play this back. Cool. Now I hope this gives you some idea of all the cool stuff you can do. One last thing before I go, and this is really important because it gives you so much power, is that you can add any number of animators to a text element. So with this current drunken text animation, let's add a totally separate animator to the same text element. Go up to the text property and over on the right hand side, let's again click on animate. And this time let's animate the position. Basically what I want is I want the text to be not visible at the beginning and then the characters kind of drop in from the top and start forming this text left to right. When we selected to animate the position of the text layer, After Effects automatically added a brand new animator, Animator 2, onto the text layer. This animator contains a simple range selector and a position effect that will be applied. If I decrease the Y position of the effect, you can see the effect on the text that simply gets moved up. Let's open up the range selector. And now, if I move the start for the selector, can you see how only the selected range will have the position effect applied and the text repositioned further up. So if I now actually jack this up way more of the screen, what will happen is that as the position effect gets applied, the text vanishes off the top of the screen. So I can go to the beginning, click the stopwatch icon for the start of the range selector. I could also do the offset, but let's go with the start. Let's move forward about two seconds and let's jack this up to 100. And now my text has two animations. One is the drunken text animation that will play absolutely regardless of all the other animators. And I have a second animator that is only responsible for making this text appear. So let's scrub to the beginning. 
Also, I am going to enable motion blur on this layer because the text is falling quite quickly. So I think it'll look cool with some motion blur. It's already enabled on the composition. Let's also enable it on the layer. And let's play back our final text effect. Now tell me that that's not cool. Adobe After Effects, especially if you know what you can and can't do with Adobe Premiere, opens up a whole new world of animating your text elements and your titles. And as I said, because all of these text elements sit on a transparent background, you can render them out into Adobe Premiere. If you've got After Effects CC, you also have live text templates, which again, make it a lot easier to then customize your text directly in Premiere. Um, and I might cover that in another video, but I hope that even though we really just scratched the surface of what is possible with titles in Adobe After Effects, I at least got you a little bit excited about all of the cool stuff that you can create. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, make sure to go to youtube.com slash surface studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.